Hey viewers, welcome back to the self Main Auto Channel. That's a 2016, it's the Ford, it's the Escape. It's got the big one six with the turbo. And it also has the problem, classic problem, uh, customer complaint is I go get gas and then I can't get my car started. Uh, so that's a pretty common complaint across a lot of different manufacturers, not just uh, Fords, but you'll get it on you know, GMs, Chryslers, Hondus, Toyotas, everything. Uh, that has a purge valve. Uh, more often than not, though, it's accompanied by uh, an engine light. You know, you get Chryslers, you're going to start getting, you know, large evap leaks. Same things with the GMs, Fords. You can start getting the gas cap message, and then oftentimes, if it goes unfixed, you'll get, uh, oh gosh, you'll get all kinds of different types of evap codes. You know, unwanted purge flow codes. You can get rich codes, lean codes all kinds of codes and it all stems back to the canister purge valve now the one on this car is very intermittent it's only happened to this guy a few times in the past month he'll go to get gas fills it up with fuel you know crank 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 won't start have to put it in clear flood and boom you know starts uh, but oddly enough no engine light so asked me about it regular customer and i told him my thoughts uh that the purge valve particularly on these cars is very common it's quite a conglomerate of uh, hoses and chuck valves and everything because of uh, the turbo. I told him we can, uh, two options. I says, A, we can take a big fat guess and wing a purge valve at it, and that's a pretty good guess, or B, we can wait for it to fail completely, get an engine light, 100% diagnose it, and say, you know, boom, here you go, pal, here's your problem. But uh, he elected for option A, gave him a quote on it. They're not horribly expensive. They're on a back order from Ford since eternity. I haven't been able to get one in years from a Ford dealer, so this time we went with the classic Napper one. Uh, cross our fingers, hope it works, and let's get after it, boys. We're gonna begin where? At the beginning, but we're gonna remove the air intake tube here. Let's see if we can't get this little fella out of our way. I think there's in there something on the back side of these things. I could be wrong. Perhaps not. Get this little quick connect up here. This is one of the hoses that we're going to be replacing. Give it the classic reach under. I'm going to do it with a screwdriver here. There's that. So that was just a safety retainer lock on top there. The actual release is underneath. You push up on the little green tab. We'll put the lock back on there. If we can figure out how to do so. There, we'll just keep that clicked like that. These things kind of snake all over the engine. I think you got one that goes down to the air charge cooler here. If I remember correctly. And you gotta do what I call the PP. It's called pull and pray. It goes down into some rubber grommets here. If you hear a harsh click and a snap, well, you know you got it. They've got one right in there, and there's another one back here on the battery box. I don't know if I can get our little fingers under it, and I did. Yeehaw. You feel like you got another one there, fella. So I remember, yes sir, right here under the little snout. Let's see if we can't get that little... Mm. Oh, come on. You're gonna need some good juju to get this one out. Come on, baby. spray on that. I don't want to snap it off on camera. You guys think I'm a hack? Let's see if we can't do something a little bit different just to avoid breaking. These cars are really easy to break. 
I'm just gonna pull it out of that rubber grommet because it will, it will snap the ear off. I'll show you uh, once I get this out what you're gonna have to, to do there. Um, but all I'm trying to do is get to the stupid clamp that's rolled way the heck down around the back side. Makes it kind of a pain in the, you know who. Ding dongs. Oh, come on, fella. Okay, I think I have it loose enough that I can get it just with a socket now. Or at least be able to drop the socket where we'll never find it. Negative ghost riding. Duty do. Duty do. There, that was easy. You sneak that right out of there and do the clamps real quick, you know. Stick that to the side. We're almost out of this little fella. Now that we can get her up here, we do have one connector harness. But that's such a part. We do have a harness that goes to the intake air temp sensor. We need to get to the bottom side of it so we can get it undone, hopefully without snapping it off. Are we missing anything here? Nope, just the harness. So that is a, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, you probably can't. If I'm doing my job right, you can't. Uh, it's a little zip tie Christmas tree faster. And let me get a hook, see if we can break it. Get right underneath it there. With a little bit of luck, it'll come out. With no luck, it'll just break off because these things are super brittle. Come on, baby. Boy, I think we're in luck. I'll tell you, the old SK. That she does a pretty nice job on these things. You gotta be gentle like a baby. So there's that. If it breaks off, you know, forget about it. Just zip tie it. Okay. Not a big deal. You're gonna make me swear. We're gonna unhook the hose that goes to the vacuum pump here. That'll give us a little more room. There she go, ooh, a mouse nest. That's fun. So here's on the front, that little rubber donger that lives right down here. Just slip it out of the bracket instead of trying to pull it up out of its nipple like these. Just slip it out, otherwise, like I say, you're gonna snap it off. And once it's out, now you can work on trying to get it out of the hole if you want. It's up to you, a uh, high probability that you'll break it. on the intake manifold here. There's that, and that's just your typical squeeze tab. You give those a little pinch, a pinch and a squeeze, and then we're going to come down. Hopefully the light's not going to be too much in your way. We're going to unplug the purge valve with a simple connector there. Now it has a little rubber holder that holds it on that metal bracket. We'll just slip that baby off. Get off! Come on! That'll slip right off nice and easy for you. Should. We have to use a screwdriver and force it a little bit, but it will come off just like that, nice and easy. Okay, there's a little clamp to do that right here. Comes from a battery cable, just hooks onto the plastic hose, just a little U shaped clamp, nice and easy. Take that off, everything's pretty easy. And then this hose right here from the purge valve. That runs all the way to the back. All the way back to the purge line that goes underneath the car. Now, you have, it's the same style clip as this. You're gonna have to take the little green clip off the top, give it a little push on the opposite side, a push and a pull, remove the clip, push and a pull. I can't show you where it's at because it's too hard to get back here with the camera. But I'm gonna give her the little one-handed handy back here. I just pulled the green tab back. I'll show you, settle down. 
So it's way back there. It's the green tab. Let me show you from out here. You ready? There it is, way back there. And I did that. And then, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't. But I gave it a push and a pull. Okay? And that makes that loose. Goes right on the pipe there. It goes right back to the purge line. All the way back under the car. So that's everything. That's all of our hoses except for the one that goes way down to our air intake tube, which is way down there in the corner you see the green tab and hence and hence i'm gonna have to reach down there with the one-handed handy and get that one undone which i'm not going to show you i'm just going to reach down and do it all right we're going in boys i'm going to give it a left-handed job here i think maybe i won't i just don't want to put the car in the lift if we can avoid it i don't know why I don't know why as mechanics we avoid having to put the car in the lift. Okay, I can push the little tab, but I'm going to need a long pry driver to flick it off. Bring it in the dog. See if that's going to give us enough. That should give me enough. So I want to reach down. I'm going to push the tab. The tab's on the bottom side, of course. Give it a push. And hopefully I'm pushing it far enough. Give it a little flick here. I don't think I am. Get it around here where I can really get after it. I need something different here, folks. Give it a push. Push, push, push. And then just flick it with the pry. I didn't need like a giant bar, but I needed to go in and give it, give it one of those. Give her a little what's up. And now that that's released, we are fully released. Woo! Now, we can snake this whole little mess out of here. Now there is a coolant hose right here. And something else feels like we're hooked up on something else. Let's sneak it out and around the coolant hose. What you should do is take a little picture of this with your cell phone so you know how it goes as far as getting snaked under stuff. If you don't have photographic memory like I don't. Mm-hmm. Another mm -hmm, mm -hmm. little clippy doodad there. Oh boy. Down around through the harness. Oh this is never going back the way it was. Yes it will. Mostly. Just remember, twist it around everything, and we'll be good. Shimon, baby. Oh yeah. Push, push, push. Ah, oh, baby is born. There it is. There's your canister purge valve on your Ford. Okay. Now we got the new one from Napper. Uh, not a sponsor. We need to, the, the Napper one's cool because if it ever goes bad in the future, what? Boop! Bippity bobbity boop! <laughs> well, you get the idea. Quick connects. Change this purge valve. Who would have thunk? However, uh, these are also equipped with a couple check valves. The check valves do go bad on these, so be ye warned that they do go bad. If, you, if you're changing it out, you're probably better served to change the whole thing, just for the record. We got this little guy we need to stick on there, so we need to unhook this side of it. Hook this rubber up on here, because this is what holds it to the bracket, okay? And this goes back to the purge line way up underneath now. So we're going to come up underneath here, twist it all back through the whole harness everywhere in which it went before. If you remember, there's a little wire harness back there. It goes kind of wrapping around. We're going to hook it back on this metal bracket. Okay. Okay, children. 
and then we're going to hook it right back up underneath here where we were. With just a click. Click. Nope. Let's give her a little squeeze. Click. Okay. And you'll see back here the wiring harness that you went around the wrong way like this guy did. Back by the fuel pressure sensor. And you're going to unplug that and move the harness around to the side it needs to be on and plug the fuel pressure sensor back in. That's actually right in service date. It tells you to do that. It tells you to do it wrong and then flip the harness around where it needs to be. I'll show you in a minute here. Mmm! boy. So that's right. And that's right. Okay. So far, so good, fellas. So far, so good. We're going to plug the canister purge back in. Not with this wire, because this is for the intake air temp, but with the canister purge wire, which is right here. I was just testing you. This is going to go here. A little clippy doodad there. And that's going to go there. We're almost done, fellas. Uh, now we need to remember where this goes. Does anybody remember? Well, you know what they say, fake it till you make it. So we're going to bring this around. Totally don't remember which way that went under there. That's what's figuring it out. Da, da, that's going to run down there. Loop that around there. Gonna plug that into the other side of our purge. Keep our wire up here. We're going to come right to the front of our intake manifold. Clip that one. I like so, and then we're gonna reach way down yonder, way down below, and see if we can't click this guy in. You gotta be careful down here because it just clicks onto this plastic nipple. So if you're if you're down here and you're really horsing on it, you're gonna want to be careful. No horsing around, I guess, is what I'm getting at. You just kind of gotta line it up. I wish I could show you, but it's in quite a restricted area. That's it, you're making me mad now. Wow, I anger easily. That was easy. Okay, that's all clicked on. Woo! Might better use this thing. And then the coolant hose has a little clip on it. Swing that back around. Clip that onto that hose. This is for our intake air tank. Of course, this is gonna go up on our air duct. And I think that we have it all the way that it needs to be. Let's make sure we've got all the little clips on it. And we do, we did a great job. Nothing's rubbing. All the little harnesses are all clipped back on their little clippy doodads. This guy's down there and clicked on. Make sure it's just not twist or doing any kind of funny business on any any wiring harnesses or anything. We'll leave this out of the way. Of course, we're going to leave our, our brake booster vacuum unhooked until we get stuff resituated here. So, so that's it. That was easy. That was mostly easy. So we're going to start stuffing all this stuff back in. Now, unfortunately, uh, the way these are engineered, this is where the clamps have to be, you know? So it's not from the ding-dong mechanic that put the clamp here that you physically can't get to, okay? You can, you know, finagle some stuff back here to get behind the box to get it, but as it sits, you know, it's in a really stupid spot. So thank your local engineer for that. Uh, I'm not sure why we couldn't just make it out here and make this one out here, but instead, you know, anywho. I elected to keep the rubber piece right in the car and not fiddle with it. The other two nipples here on the bottom of the air box, we're going to give them a little spritz where they click in down here on the battery tray. And then we're 
hard just to put her back together. Don't have any fluid film down here, so we're gonna give her some super lube. Nothing makes it slide in easier than super lube. That's what their slogan says. Okay, she's all lubed. We're coming in, baby. Bring her down here. We're gonna slide it into this. Well, we don't wanna do that quite just yet, fella. Putting the cart ahead of the horse here. Come on, baby. I'm gonna slip that little rubber back in there. Mm. Let's stick this fella back in. This is not the proper way to do this, folks. Just FYI, but this is how you do it when you don't want to break stuff. We're gonna get this slip back in. Ever so gingerly. Come on, baby. I don't wanna break you, but we will if we have to. Come on, fella. We won't. JK, so there's that. And then we need to line it up with those two, and that slips right in and put our little rubber flat right back there <clears throat> we all remember this guy he clicks there and there that's all rigid again we're gonna bring our brake booster hose around and still get to our clamp we can so we're gonna click that back in very nicely and then we're gonna run this little fella Fortunately, they put the clamp on this one where we can get to it. So we're on this one all the way around town. Bring her in there. Get her a little what's up. It's in there like that. We'll stick this in there like so. And then before we tighten it up there, we'll reach back here. We're probably going to get an 8 millimeter short this time and uh, tighten that up. And then we should have our one, our last remaining purge hose here to click on there. Boom, done. That's right, the engineer made one seven millimeter and one eight millimeter. Right, makes sense. So on your air filter, you gotta make sure when you put it in that the groove of the air filter actually goes in the groove of the air box. It's, um, it's an interesting little setup. Here, we'll pop it out of here. We'll stick it in here first, would be the best bet. Because hitting that bottom groove, well, <laughs> If it's your first time, it's kind of a pain in the hoo-hoo, but we'll, uh, we'll get it. Get her lined up in there right night. Look at that, first try. And the same thing with the top of the air box. Just make sure that the air box is sitting down very nicely before you try to put the screws to it. You just kind of line it up over the air filter there, and you'll know when you've got it like that and then we can tighten her down and again with the really uh, easy to break plastic make sure you know I mean you can see here like just turning this by the shaft these screws are already stripped out she's already been to the jiffy loop so I was gonna say if you're uh, if the screws on these aren't stripped out all the way just be careful like right there where that screw stop just stop but more often than not when these cars come in the screws are already smoked. If they're not snapped off, they're usually wallered out. Okay, this one's only got one bad one, this one here, so that's not too bad. Three out of four ain't bad, I think is what they say. And then on your little top here, 
again. The next guy will thank you if you do this. Take your super lube. And this stuff's good up to 3,000 degrees. Oh no, it's not this, the other stuff is. That's food grade, you can eat this stuff. That's what, that's what it is. Give it a little wipe around in there with your finger. And the next mechanic will thank you. Usually these come in and they're all busted where a guy just grabs a hold of a corner and pulls. So don't be that guy. Try to be nice to your customers. And see now when it comes off, it'll be just like that, it'll be a piece of cake, okay? Get your light before you shove it under the hood. Now, there's the OEM Ford purge valve. Uh, if you can get it from Ford, you're better off than going you know, aftermarket. And like I say, the only advantage to the aftermarket one is if it goes bad, you technically can change just the purge valve if you wanted to. But however, the check valves on these, Ford doesn't make a great check valve. Uh, anybody that owns a F-150 with the four wheel drive and the EcoBoost knows this because they got their hubs exploded. <laughs> because the little check valve on the vacuum reservoir goes bad. If you want to get one from Napper, uh, they don't sponsor us, but that's their number. Give them a call. They usually have them in stock or can order them. And that's all you need to know. Uh, we'll find out here in a month or so if we've made the right guess, educated guess, if we loaded our parts cannon with the right ammunition. So I hope we did. And uh, the other thing I hope is I hope that you go into that comment section to give me the comments, the questions. Find us on the Insta, the Facebook. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.